You can turn to the book of Zechariah, if you don't mind. And we're going to get started with a sermon titled, The Levitical Perspective. Which I guess is now a series that we're in. Wow. But the Levitical Perspective, subtitled, That's Somebody's Son. That's Somebody's Son. Zechariah chapter number 4. And you know where we're going, don't you? Verse number 8. The word of the Lord came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, yeah. and his hands will finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. The Lord starts something and He always finishes something. And His endeavor to do that is not so we look good, but so that you know that it's God who spoke. Yes. Amen. So let's go to verse 10. Who has despised the day of small things? But these seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord which range to and fro throughout the earth. I'd encourage you to take that passage and read it in multiple translations. Because some of the imagery that then starts coming to life, and most of us are familiar with that passage from the standpoint of don't, des don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise the small things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. As many of us tend to do, we tend to despise the small things because there is so much more glory in the big things. Yeah. But read it in a few translations and, and, and have your eye lock into a different phrase of that passage for a slight change. Look at this phrase. The Lord rejoices to see a work begin. Okay, His eye looks for the beginning or the plumb line, which is in the hand of a servant. Okay, But he's looking for that. And some translations use this, um, this phrasing that's like uh, more along the lines of the Lord rejoices to see the foundational work or the Lord rejoices to see the ceremonial stone. Yeah. The first stone. Yeah. Amen. Like we like the finished product, don't we? Yep. Anybody excited about the yeah. finished? Miss Tessa, you might be excited about the finished product. <laughs> we got to get the house finished. Okay? <laughs> and the Hinkles over here are too. Because, you know, it's, it's Airbnb for them. <laughs> uh, uh, it's like they're going to come hang out a lot. But it, the Lord sees the foundational stone. What's going on where nobody else can see it has that utmost value. Isn't it interesting that of all the glorious kingdom things that the Lord will accomplish, yeah. it says to us, don't despise small beginnings. The Lord rejoices yeah. to see the cornerstone. Amen. Yeah. The Lord rejoices to see that, that, um, that start of a thing. Amen. And that brings us to this simple phrase, the significant, the big, the large, the bigger work, if you will, always begins in singularity with a single person, if you will, a single act of faith, if you will, a single moment, if you will, That's good. where he's beginning to stir something big and he's asking us to be faithful in the now. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Man. Has anybody ever... Stopped at a stoplight and looked over and seen a homeless man begging for money beside your car window. Yep. Anybody? Yep. Yep. I'm not going to ask you what goes through your mind when you see that because we all have various um, emotions come over us depending on what state of mind we're in when we're sitting at that stoplight. But I can remember being in Texas at a stoplight, stop sign or stoplight once, and a gentleman was beside my car window, and for the first time, maybe ever, 
I looked over and this expression came to me. That's somebody's son. And that had a way of placing emphasis on something, in this case someone, that was tremendously insignificant to me. He meant nothing to me. Until I thought, that's somebody's son. Yeah. Imagine I'm in that city and I look over and that's my son standing by that stop sign. Doesn't that evoke a whole different set of emotions? That's somebody's son. And so the inclination to dismiss based upon a detachment from the situation occurs when we lose that revelation of who they are, what they are, what they're going to accomplish. The same thing with works. The same thing with anything that becomes significant. It has an origin. And we often are inclined to think that we will see the great things that the Lord desires to do and we are not faithful in the little things that He asks us to do. The very basic, most fundamental things that He asks us to do, we're not faithful in them. So last week, Pastor Jake and Pastor Zach preached a remarkable sermon. And among the many phrases that were said in there that struck me, the one that kind of helped stir this sermon title this week was when Pastor Jake was emphasizing to us, Levites, Levites, we see the Levites, we see this group of people that's so bold and faithful. And everywhere you go through the scriptures, and we're going to look at some of them this morning, there's this reoccurring, reoccurring appearance of them. And... Even in times where they're not present, you see men of God send for them because their value becomes that important. But we're looking at the Levitical, uh, the Levitical perspective and we're talking about this group of people called the Levites that we're learning from. But guess what? That's somebody's son. And before they were the Levites, they were Levites. Amen. Good morning, church. It's a joy to be with you once again. Um, You know, spend a week preparing and asking the Lord, okay, what am I to give to the body this week? And Pastor Seek gave me gave me the heads up last Sunday. Give me seven days. That's early. Yeah, that's Give me seven days this time. Wow. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. Let's go. And so, but but it's funny how the Lord works because you think you have more time and. And the time becomes like, well, I don't know where to go now. So, Lord, uh, what am I to? All right, more time to go spin things in your head. <laughs> um, and so, you know, begin studying and reading on the Levi's and everything. And this morning, I realized I, I, all week I've been thinking, okay, Lord, what do you what do you want me to share with the with the body? What, where do I go with things? <laughs> and I realized the Lord this morning just tell me, this is for you. I'm speaking to you. Amen. Stop trying to think about what you're going to give to others. I want to give it to you first. Amen. And so I'm sharing that with you because uh, this morning that realization came to my heart. Yeah. The, the Lord's teaching me. Yeah. He's, he's speaking to me real time and he's revealing some things, making some things clear for me uh, that were just not clear as I've been going through this word. And so I hope the Lord speaks to you as well. Amen. Uh, but I wanted to share that real time the Lord uh, is speaking. He's been speaking and teaching me through this. Amen. Uh, Helping me to understand sonship as we're going to begin to see. Before there were the Levites, there was Levi. Amen. And so Levi is the third son of Jacob. As we heard last week from our pastor Jake and Pastor Sarah, Levi means attached. Come on. The name of Levi means attached. Because Leah said, This time maybe my husband will be attached to me by this son that I'm giving him. And, And so we know the story, we're familiar with that. So we want to bring that to mind. Levi means attached. And we're going to see more into that as we progress. But Levi is the third son of Jacob. Um, a few weeks ago, we heard a message from our pastor, Seek and our brother, Ezekiel, which was fantastic. We heard that message on Resurrection Sunday, yeah. which I thought was amazing. We're talking about the Levites on Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I'm going to see why I think that now. Because when you think of Resurrection Sunday, of course, we think Jesus Christ. 
But there's a, such a foundation the Lord has built for us so that we actually understand what Jesus did Amen. for us. Amen. And I love that we heard a message regarding the Levites on Resurrection Sunday. And we're going to see why in a little bit, a little bit later. Okay? Amen. But we heard from our, from our brothers, our pastor and our brother Ezekiel, uh, seven gleanings from the Levites. Yeah. Come on. Okay? And I hope that you guys have those written down. I don't know them by memory. Yeah. Uh, but I hope we have them written down. Because there's a gleaning that we are receiving from the Levites, right? Yeah. And so we got seven of them. Now, when you hear the word seven, what things kind of come to mind? Completion. Completion, right? We're, we're familiar with seven. There's seven days in the week. In yeah. seven days, the Lord created the world. There's, there's things that trigger our mind when we hear the word, the, the number seven. It's a familiar number for us. And when we hear the, the number three, there's maybe some things that trigger our mind. Like on the third day, Jesus rose up. Amen. Maybe other things come to mind. Now, Levi is the third son of Jacob. And so let's go to Genesis 1. We're going to read in verse 11. Okay? Levi is the third son of Jacob. When you get there, say, Levi. 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 That's somebody's son, Levi. Levi. All right, Genesis 1.11 says, And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. Okay, now I only read the second half of that third day because we'll come back to the first half, to that verse later. But this part of that third day is talking about the earth sprouting vegetation, right? And plants yielding fruit that includes seed in them. Yeah. Okay? So when we hear the word seed, the first thing we be, need to begin thinking about is offspring. Yes. Or yes. things that multiply. Right? Yeah. A seed becomes fruit. And so the Lord is establishing his creation. On the third day, he decided that things were going to come up out of the earth. Okay? And so things that come out of the earth reproduce. Living things reproduce. And so seed that is bearing seed after its kind. Uh, a year or so ago, we heard a message on this from, from our pastors that was fantastic. We'll never forget. A seed or a tree produces after its own kind. And so uh, later in the chapter, in verse 28, the Lord, talking about men and women, he says... And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And so the Lord begins His creation, setting things in order. On day three, He brings us fruit and vegetation and plants and seed. And then later on, day six, He creates man and woman, and He tells them, Multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. And so it's, it's, it's triggering our minds to think, Man and woman reproducing, bearing children, has to do with seeds and, and plants and multiplication and fruit. Yeah. And so when we think of the number three, we must begin thinking about um, offspring, sons, yeah. heirs, okay, or continuity, that which continues, right? A seed becomes fruit, which, uh, sorry, a seed becomes a tree, which bears fruit, which bears more seed, and it's reproduction, it's multiplication. And so we're thinking of Levi, who is the third son of Jacob. Okay, I want us to have that in mind as we continue forward talking about Levi. Now, I'm going to take a, a little break from that, and I'm going to speak a little bit regarding myself. And as the Lord is speaking this to me, okay? The Lord, I told you, the Lord is revealing things to me real time. Yeah. Amen. Because I'm thinking of sonship. I'm thinking of uh, uh, heirs. And we're thinking of Levi is somebody's son. Uh, I realized this morning the Lord was telling, to, telling me, uh, you were an orphan, and I brought you into a family. Okay, so we're going to begin thinking of Levi as he was the son of Jacob and Leah. Before there were the Levites, there was Levi. And so um, as we move forward, let's think of this sonship as something related to offspring, heir, continuity. We're thinking of number three because Levi is the third son of Jacob, um, and we're going to keep moving forward. Amen. I want to interject here before Oscar takes us to Exodus chapter 32. And I want to 
have us revisit um, or visit, perhaps for some in this room visiting for the first time, Genesis 34. Can everybody go to Genesis 34? Yeah. yeah. Anybody familiar with Genesis 34? Okay, we got quite a story in Genesis chapter number 34. I'm sorry. I keep saying 24. Go to 34 for me. Genesis chapter 34. Now, before there's the Levitical priesthood, before there's the Levites, there's Levi. Okay? I love that the Word gives us a little uh, information about Levi. Don't you? Yeah. Uh, Brother Oscar is teaching us regarding uh, some of the... The, the meanings of his name, the implications of his birth order, all these things having um, uh, a lot of value okay, from a spiritual perspective of what the Lord has ordained from the beginning. Nothing's random in the Bible. okay. Nothing's randomly placed in the Bible. Okay? So that by in Genesis chapter number 34, I want us to go to verse 25. Uh, but before we uh, read that, I hope everybody understands the backdrop a little bit. Jacob's daughter is, her name is Dina, and she is captured and taken advantage of, okay? Uh, and that's keeping it super polite because we're in a room full of kids. Yep. And there are these two brothers of Jacob. Their names are Simeon and Levi, Amen. and they respond to this a certain way. Now, depending on how you've grown up and heard this taught or how you've interacted with it, you may have some various perspectives uh, from one another. It's not my job to uh, convince you of a certain perspective. I'm just telling you I got one that um, is uh, probably in alignment with a lot of the people in here. Okay, And you have to look at what the Scripture says. Look at what the scripture says in light of what is occurring in that time and obviously what the word of God wouldn't permit us to go do revenge-wise. Yeah. Okay? But then you have a people developing. Okay? You have a land full of um, uh, Canaanites and, and, and you know all the ites that are not a part of God's family. And the way in which they would be called to eradicate them from the land, the way in which the Lord would establish precedent that they should not intermarry with them and all of these things because it would contaminate. And so you have these, and read the narrative, but you have these men capturing Dina and taking advantage of her. And Jacob's two sons... Simeon and Levi are not going to have anything to do with this. So they come up with a plan. Okay? And the plan is to make it look like they're going to unite and to demand of them that they be circumcised in order that they could intermarry in their clans. And then on the third day, they do something pretty special. Okay? On the third day, they do something very special. It happens to be a passage that I love dearly. And they sneak into that camp and they slaughter them. Jacob's not happy about it. Okay, You don't understand why? He's probably trying to make peace in the land. Simeon and Levi are not concerned with that. And so... They take their swords and they execute vengeance. And they walk out of that place with their sister. And everywhere where she was defiled, they went and took from there too. You may have all kinds of ways you wrestle with that. Nope. <laughs> I want you to look at what the text says. I want you to even look in that passage of who gets the last word. And I'll just tell it to you just for fun. Simeon and Levi say, should he treat our sister as a harlot? Our job is not to break down this narrative and you can tell I'm trying to restrain myself from preaching just on Genesis 34. But there's some kind of a zeal here that we know the Lord was pleased with. Yeah. Because you can flash forward 
I mean, at a minimum of four or five hundred years. Now, we're talking about Levi. Yeah, yeah. A single dude and his brother Simeon. We're not talking about Simeon today, we're talking about Levi. Okay? But you got Levi who develops this scheme and in his zeal he goes in with a sword and wreaks absolute havoc upon all of those men in their pain. Like they're three days into a circumcision. Yeah. Okay? They're immobile. It's brilliant. It's genius. <laughs> and they go in and they wipe them out. They say, that's hard. I wonder what Moses thinks when he's stumbling upon them in Exodus 32. Okay? So just imagine, that's Levi. That's the man named Levi. Okay? Before there were the Levites, there was Levi. I just told you a little sneak peek about Levi. And now, in your own heart and mind, imagine you're flashing forward. Okay? Levi has executed vengeance, got his sister back, yep. and slayed everyone involved yep. in doing what they did to his sister. Yep. And now I want you to flash forward. Show me your flashing forward by flipping through your Bibles and to Exodus 32. Yep. Okay? And now, very briefly, we set the stage for something that's going to be even more beautiful. Amen. What the big question, I mean, you can even look it up on the internet. Why would God pick the Levites? Okay? Anybody ever wrestled with a scripture like zeal from my father's house has consumed me? He has to have warriors. Amen. Yeah. He has to have men and women yeah. that are willing to fight. Come on now. And while some sit back and consider implications and ramifications of how it affects us socially or, or how it's going to affect our peace and our immediate circle, other men act on behalf of the Lord. Amen. Absolutely. And so I want you to imagine now, you flash forward in your minds, I'm guessing five or six hundred, Jake is going to help us out later with an exact date, but just to be safe, I'm going to say hundreds of years. Flash forward. And now we're at Exodus 32. And Oscar's going to set the table for us. Bring it. Come on. Amen. Amen. So there's, there's something in Levi, a characteristic, a, a, a trait that seems like it's just in him. Yeah. Right? We talked about Genesis 1. And the, on the third day where fruit produces after its kind. Uh -huh. Right? A tree produces after its kind. That's right. A, a mango tree is going to produce mangoes. You like them mangoes. Right? A peach tree. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's intentional there. <laughs> okay. I realize mangoes are not as, as common in, in the United States. Uh, so that was probably not the best analogy because when I said mangoes, I got some stare faces. If I was in Honduras, everyone was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we did enjoy some mangoes that Tuesday. Yeah. Anyway. So, a, a mango tree produces mangoes. Yeah. Um, Levi is going to produce after its kind. Come on. Come and so, we, we heard on Genesis 34 of this, this, this innately, there's something in Levi that is, is causing him to seek justice. Yeah. Uh, and you can read the text and, and, and see what the Lord shows you about that. Uh, but we see that trait in Levi. And so when you get to Exodus 32, yeah. hundreds of years later, we're going to read in verse 25. He says, when Moses saw that the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the duration of their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. Come on. Now, you, you guys know this is, this is, this is the, the golden calf. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Moses has broken the two tablets in anger. The Lord is burning with anger because the people of Israel have fallen into idolatry. Mm -hmm. And they're calling a calf made out of gold, they're calling them the God. Come on. And they're saying to each other, this is, this is God who brought us out of Egypt. And God is burning in anger and Moses is burning in anger because the people have forgotten their God. Yep. And it says in verse 26 at the end of it and all the sons of levi gathered around him so moses says who is on the lord's side come to me now let's remember moses is a levi himself as we heard last week okay born from a levi father and a Levi levite mother right he's a levite himself and he's saying who is on the lord's side come to me 
And the ones who respond are the sons of Levi. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord, God of Israel. These are the words of the Lord. Moses is saying them, but these are the words of the Lord. Put your sword on your side, yeah. each of you, and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout the camp. And each of you kill his brother and his companion and his neighbor. Yeah. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses. And that day about 3,000 men of the people fell. Yeah. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained Come on. for the service of the Lord. Amen. Uh, each one at the cost of his son and of his brother, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, that's heavy, huh? That's yeah. good. Yeah. This is no easy task. Wow. Like, they're cleaning the camp, and this is their camp. This yeah. is their brothers. Yeah. It yeah. even says at the cost of their sons. Right. And what is the reason? Because there's, there's part of the camp who is fallen into idolatry, uh -huh. and Moses gives the invitation Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. Yeah. He yeah. gives them the invitation, and there are some who are not willing to come on the Lord's side wow. with Moses. The Levites come, the sons of Levi come, and the Lord commits them to, to clean the camp. Wow. Okay, now not everyone dies. About 3,000 men fell that day. Wow. And so when you're thinking through this and you're pondering through it, it's like, wow, this, this is heavy. Uh, the Lord, the Lord is not happy with sin. The Lord is not happy with idolatry, uh, and He has to, He has to cleanse, He has to purify His people, yeah. or else His people are going to disappear. Yep. Now, these are the people of God who are supposed to be a blessing to the world. Yep. Remember the blessing of Abraham. These are people who are called to be uh, holy and a chosen, yeah. their chosen on. possession of God. Amen. They're supposed to be separate and to be devoted to the Lord, so that God can bring His plan through them. Yep. And they've gone aside after the the gods of the nations. Yep. So God has to clean the house. And the Levites are the agents to do it. Amen. Yeah. The sons of Levi are the ones who carry out the job. Okay, now let's let's um let's go to Matthew 10, 32. Come on, good word. And this is a scripture that we've heard and that also seems very hard. Um these are the words of Jesus. Okay, Matthew 10. We're gonna begin in verse 32. When you get there, say shalom. 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 Okay, verse 32 says, So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. Think of what's happening in Exodus 32. Yep. Are you on the Lord's side or are you not? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Are you going to serve God or are you going to save your idols of gold? Wow. Verse 34 says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Amen. Wow. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother. Yep. A daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we, we've grown up in church hearing this verse and it seems like, man, what is Jesus saying? What, how come? Like, well, Jesus knew, Jesus knew the law more than anyone else, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The word of God, the living word of God. Hebrews 4.12 tells us that the Word of God is alive and active, yep. yeah. living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. Yeah. So Jesus in Matthew 10 is talking, and he's, he's saying, I don't come to bring peace to the earth, I bring a sword. Yeah. And he begins to talk about division within a household. Yeah. Now, now Jesus knows there's, he doesn't want this to happen, but he knows there's going to be some, even in the same families, that will not turn from their idolatry. And some that will. And he tells to those who have the faith. Who are willing to turn to him. Say you, you must do this. Even if it means. That some in your own house will turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're thinking of. 
the sons of Levi. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were willing to do what the Lord had established for them to do, yeah. so that they could purify the people of God. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and so this is a heavy word, and we're talking about sons. Yeah. Okay, this will not be the case in this church. Amen. This will not be the case in this church because the Lord is taking us to greater levels of unity. Yeah. Okay? But that means that we must be of one spirit and must be submitted to the word of God, Amen. even when it becomes hard. Yeah. And so we see that Jesus is talking about a sword. Hebrews 4 mentions a sword that is uh, the, wor the words of God that are a double-edged sword. And sometimes they can cause division when some are not willing to, uh, to submit to it. Yeah. Revelation 2.16 and Revelation 19.15. You can just write those down. Talk about a sword coming out of the mouth of Jesus. Yeah. Right? Which he will... He will he will tread the, the nations. Yeah. He will his word pierces through bone and marrow. Yeah. He Amen. judges Amen. the heart of men. Yeah. And so we're thinking of Levi. We're thinking of the sons of Levi. We're thinking of uh, a people that a fruit after the kind of a man that was willing to do whatever it took. Yeah. Yeah. To do what the Lord had asked yes. you to do. Yeah. Right. Even yeah. one of the hardest things. This is, yeah. this is, I don't know that it gets harder than this. Yeah. When it's even in your own household. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is a characteristic that we're seeing in, in the Levites. Now, mm. let's go back to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, because we said, Shalom. There's a kind of peace, right? Jesus, Jesus is, is very wise and he's, we're using the word peace. And he says, I don't bring peace but a sword. Okay, and we've, we've, we've studied the word shalom before. We know it doesn't just mean uh, let's not rock the waters so nothing, so we're all at peace. No, it means let's establish order. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And sometimes to establish order, we, we actually have to have friction uh -huh. yeah. uh, for there to be proper shalom, right? Uh, you know, if you're married, you, you, you know, you know, sometimes we have to, okay, let's talk this out so there could be good shalom, shalom in the home, yeah. right? Uh, it's, not, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. We're not talking about uh, source anymore. We're talking about shalom. Now, yeah. Okay. Yes. It's something that you have to fight. We have to fight for this. Amen. Uh, not fight against each other. Fight with yeah. each other. Amen. Fight together Amen. to yeah. accomplish that shalom Amen. in our homes. Amen. And so back to Genesis 1, verse 9. This is the third day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together, he called seeds. Mm -hmm. And God saw that it was good. Okay, so we, we talked about the third day before. And we were looking at the singular third day in regards to um, fruit coming out of the earth. Right? And we think of three. We think of fruitfulness. We think of new life. We think of that which, which is born, that which grows, that which multiplies. When you, when you read some, some Hebrew, uh, you, you would say rabbinical thought or some Hebrew understanding of the word three, uh, they look at the, at the third day or the number three in conjunction with one, two, three, four, what the progressive creation of God. Amen. And so when they think of the word three, they're thinking, okay, how does three relate to days one and days two? We're not going to get too, much, too deep into what happened the first day, what happened the second day. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I'm not... Not even nowhere close to on, on bailing all of that. I don't think none of us will. Uh, but there's there's a beautiful uh, simplicity in it Amen. that when you think of number one, you think of uh, echad, right? The Hebrew word echad. We think of unity, uh -huh. right? Uh, when you think of the number one, just yeah. just simple simple back to elementary school, right? Yeah. One times one is one. Yeah. One divided by one is one. One cannot be broken one cannot be divided one, one is one that stands alone amen. yeah so there's only one who stands alone who is self-existing which is god amen uh, he's the only one who can be at peace with himself uh -huh. now he decided to create others because he's he's good yeah but he's the only one who can be self-existent and at yeah. peace within himself yeah. is god and so on day one you see god begin i'm not going to get too into i'm trying my best to not get to it because this, this is not for today but yeah. on day one you see god is there yeah. And it's God. It's nothing else. It's, it's He's the self-existing one. It's, and He begins to, to order His creation. Uh, on day two, there's a, there's a clear uh, distinction. There's waters that are separated. This is, I don't know how to explain this. I'm, I promise you, I'm trying my best. There's certain waters that are above and there's certain waters that are below. 
And the Lord, the Lord separates the heavens. Come on. He, he calls the heavens and then he calls the earth. Yeah. Okay, that happens in day two. On day two, there's there's a clear two realm distinction now. The heavens and the earth. But think of number two. Number two can be divided. Right? There's two agents now. There's A and there's B. You divide two by one, then you get one. Right? The, the, the point is, there's two things now. There's there's two things that can be divided. Okay? Uh, number two can represent difference or opposites. It could even represent division. It can also represent witness. Now, there's a witness. not just me. It's, there's two of us. And so, the reason I'm saying this is because when you get to number three, with this progressive thinking, we're thinking of what one represents, what does two represent. Three, in Hebrew thought, represents harmony. Or something that can combine one and two and bring it into a kind of unity Amen. that was not there before. But right? where one can be against another, the third one could come in and say, we're, we're all together. Wow. Yeah. And you can yeah. see this in, in our lives. You can uh -huh. see this in, in our pastors, how they work together as three, as a three-string chord is not easily broken. Yeah. Amen. And so three can represent a, a kind of unity yeah. that is actually stronger than one because Amen. it's three agreeing into something. Right? Where two or three gather in my name, I will be there. Yeah. And so... Three can represent this harmony. Now, why are we thinking of three again? Because Levi is the third son of Jacob. Amen. Amen. Okay? Jacob and Leah had Reuben, they had Simeon, and then they had Levi. Yeah. Which means attach. Yep. You see how this begins to play? The Lord is perfect, and His intentions wow. are perfect. He does nothing randomly in the Word. Levi was a son, we heard this last week, a son given to a wife, to attach her to her husband. Amen. That, those were her hope. That was her hope. See, number three attaches, brings up kind of harmony yeah. that yeah. It, it can maybe one and two need that third. Amen. And so yeah. and so Leah's hope was for this son to attach. We know that it didn't quite happen for her in that moment, but the Lord had something else in mind for the future that he was to bring from this son. Yeah. 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 Amen. Church, y'all can flip to Genesis 49. Uh, while you're flipping... Was anybody blessed Thursday night by some of those realities that uh, Pastor Jake brought out? Yes. I mean, when you're in Jeremiah chapter number five and you see God's heart for preservation, when he's making that uh, clarion call, if you can find one, I'll, I will preserve. I'm looking for one man. Yeah. And I can do my work through one man. You might think of um, Sodom and Gomorrah in the book of Genesis, uh, chapter number 18. And he says... You find ten righteous, and I won't destroy this place. Yeah. Okay? The Lord's heart is to raise up men and women of God, sons and daughters of God, who will carry about His work of preservation. Yeah. Preserving what's His. That makes sense to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So when you think of Levi, the, the significance of his birth order is all of a sudden becoming a little bit more of a revelation to us. Uh -huh. Okay? He existed to attach God to his people. Yep. Isn't it kind of fun to interact with some of these narratives from the perspective of life? I mean, try to try to pretend you're Moses. You're in you're Moses in Exodus 32. You come down from the mountain, you've had an amazing time with the Lord. You come down and you hear this commotion. And you know it's not celebrating, you know it's idolatry. And you see this big golden calf. Okay? And you see people dancing around it and having a good time and bowing down to it and worshiping it. And you realize you need to do something yep. about this. And then you call for someone who is with the Lord stand up. And then you see, we word it like this, the Levites stood up. The text does not word it like that. It says the sons of Levi. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's yeah. always this acknowledgement somebody that that's son. somebody's son. Yeah. 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 The sons of Levi emerged. Amen. You Anybody in here think Moses may have had an idea of what occurred in Genesis 34? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Think Moses yeah. may have been familiar with that story? story. Yeah. So what would you think if you're in Exodus 32 and you're like, if you're with the Lord, stand up and you hear uh, 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 some ruffling and scuffling around, you look back and be like, oh, the sons of Levi have stood up. What do you think's going through his mind? Oh, we can get something done today. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Because before they were the Levites. Before you have Phineas taking a spear, yeah. you have Levi. Okay, this is this is not meant to be a violent sermon. 
This is meant to produce men and women, though, yeah. who take the kingdom by violence, yes. by yes. force. Come on. This yes. violence and this force that the kingdom's talking about is not, you know, meeting somebody in the alley and bashing them down. Our day, we've grown out of that, okay? Yeah. We've grown out of that season, right? Right, guys? The older men, y'all grown out of that, right? Mr. Hinkle, you've grown out of beating people up. Mr. Spence, Mr. Tony, no, okay. But we've grown into this, the violent take it by force. This this force is this explosion onto the scene. You stand for what's right. You're full of the love of God, but you have this passion and this zeal that's uncompromising in your generation. This was a hard thing. As Oscar's preaching, it's a hard thing that the Levites had to do. But remember, that's somebody's son. The very, he's born to keep the attachment alive. He's born for that. It's what his name means. It's what his existence will be. And he's producing after his own kind. And you see this trickle down effect. Now, um, Genesis 49 is Jacob's Israel's final prophetic words concerning his sons. And I want to read one of them to us. And then just pose a few things for thought. Amen? Amen. Anybody ever been a little bit confused when you read through the blessings of Jacob to his sons? Yeah. It, sounds, uh, it sounds a little abstract at times. And you could just assume that God's word is right. What he meant is right. What Jacob meant is what God wanted said and recorded. And me and you are going to spend the rest of our lives figuring out how to interpret it rightly according to the heart of God. But I'm going to read this to you because Simeon and Levi, they did what they did. And now here in verse 5, there is what Jacob speaks over them. And there is a direct reference back to that day. (laughs) Okay. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are implements of violence. Let my soul not enter into their counsel. Let not my glory be united with their assembly. Because in their, because in their anger, they slew men. In their self-will, they lamed oxen. Cursed be their anger... For it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will disperse them in Israel, in Jacob, and I will scatter them in Israel. Not going to spend a lot of here breaking a lot of time down here. Not going to spend a lot of time here breaking this down. But I want you to consider what Jacob says here. How your initial understanding could interact with it. And then look at everything else you now read and learn about the Levites throughout the text of God's Word. Jacob saying, I will not be in their council. You have any idea how essential the Levites become? Yeah. Like what God commissions them to do? Oscar's going to read it in a few minutes. There's like like this day, this moment. It's Exodus 32, but it's repeated in Deuteronomy chapter. Chapter 10, there's this day where he says, I've set them apart. Yeah. Okay? What Jacob's saying on his deathbed and how we interact with that, and then what we read about the Levites throughout the rest of the text can make our heads spin a little bit. Yeah. They become severely important. Yeah. Okay? Yep. In fact, if you go to the book of Ezra and read uh, 6 and 7 and 8 and 9, you'll find out uh, just before they proclaim a fast and make this journey and they're exiting out of captivity to go back to the land God has promised them. He's looking around and he's taking a census and you know the first thing you realize is they ain't no Levites. Huh. So they don't do another thing until he sends noteworthy men to go find Levites. Wow. Amen. But even I am wording that wrong. He says, go find me sons of Levi. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he says. He doesn't say, go, go get me a bunch of Levites. He says, I need sons of Levi. And if you'll go and you'll read it, he, he finds a few. He yeah. even finds some that were commissioned by David. And he brings them back, the sons of Levi. Before they were the Levites, they're Levi. Yeah. There is something about the zeal and the passion and the commitment to do the hard thing 
that takes these men and propels them on the scene to be used by God. But do y'all remember the seven Levitical perspectives we're trying to hold to as we make this applicable in our life? The first one was the Levites stood against the pressures of compromise. You live in a time where you are pressured to compromise at every turn. The Levites had nothing to do with that. Amen. Yeah. They remained ready. You, you won't find a time where something is needed to be done and they can't call upon them. They remained ready. Amen. Even in seasons where it looked like they weren't needed, they were making themselves ready. Yeah. I love this morning. We were getting ready and um, Sailor Joe comes up in her pretty little dress and she's got a clipboard with a lot of computer paper. Okay? And I could say, hey, that ain't cheap on Amazon. Let's put it back in the printer that only works from time to time anyway. Okay? The technology is going downhill, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, shouldn't you just be able to click the button on your phone and it print? But I am at a loss for how long it takes us to get that thing fired up. Uh, but anyway, not to digress. <laughs> I was saying of her. Okay, beautiful little Sailor Joe. She's got that little clipboard packed full of computer paper. I said, you, you're, you're ready to do some drawing this morning or something? And she goes, uh, no, Daddy, I just want to be dressed in readiness. That's awesome. Well, I thought to myself, that's mighty nice. It's nice you're quoting back the sermon that her big brother and her daddy preached. And it stirred my heart <laughs> Amen. that I need to show up ready. Yeah. Yep. These, the Levitical perspective was these men were ready. Yeah. These men committed sacrificial tasks. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't just the glory saying, hey, you know what? If you, if you ever need, um, you know, you ever need help doing something, I mean, what if it was to power wash the porta potty the Sunday after Thanksgiving? Because, you know, it gets a little activity. <laughs> Listen, what if it was not the most noteworthy of things? Their sacrificial task. The Levites bore responsibility. They didn't pass the buck. They bore responsibility. The Levites were diligent in worship. The Levites were satisfied with their inheritance, yeah. which was they had no part in the land inheritance. Yeah. The Lord said, I'm going to be their inheritance. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're kind of like the homeless man on the street corner, yeah. except they're the Lord's. Amen. Yeah. Number seven was they belong to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So over and over and over, in light of, not despite, but in light of, a proper reading of Genesis 49. Yeah. They become quite necessary for counsel. Amen. They become scattered everywhere. Just like it says. They're scattered everywhere because of how essential they are. And in Ezra, they're not even going to lead a group of people back to Jerusalem without the Levites because how, how are they going to perform temple acts of service? Yeah. Yeah. These men folded the curtains. These men handled the money. These men, you know, in, uh, when they're getting ready to read the law in Ezra and Nehemiah, I imagine it's a lot of people around and have a hard time getting them quiet. Yeah. Okay? We know what that's like even in our little family here. Okay? They're getting ready to read the law. Everybody's talking. Okay? Probably talking about what they baked that morning um, and all that stuff. Okay? They're talking. And they want to read from the scroll. Guess who they send throughout the camp to get everybody quiet so everybody can hear the voice of the one reading. The sons of Levi. They send it. They're involved in everything. Yeah. yeah. It's good. The Levitical perspective is yeah. so very important. Yep. They appear at every major theme relating from the temple work to the presence of God and how those things are connected Amen. is very, very profound. Everybody say, Levi is the third son of Jacob. Levi is the third son of Jacob. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're talking about number three, right? Yeah. Um, but I have, I have a question for Malachi. Oh. Okay. Malachi, when, you, when I say number 23, what's the first thing that comes to mind? 23. 
There you go, Michael Jordan. Okay, I knew I could count. Him. I knew I could count him. I put him on the spot. Okay, but I'm saying that because for us it's normal. Julio, when I say number ten, what comes to mind? Messi, right? <laughs> right. We we understand that in sports numbers have a so so sort of significant, right? Number ten in soccer is a playmaker. You give the ball to the ten. In basketball, you give the ball to 23. Yeah. Let them let them take care of business, right? Yeah. So we have this understanding because of man, because of the culture that we live in. Amen. Um, when we're talking about Hebrew understanding of numbers, yeah. I'm disconnected from that, so I have to fight for that. Yeah. Right. To them, it's, it's normal. They grew up with these things. This is part of their daily life, yeah. ingrained in their in their culture. Amen. And so, I'm gonna give you some more some more. Um, some more threes here. Come on. Okay. Oh, good. Some more threes. I guess you could shoot from the three. There you go. <laughs> That's what Malachi likes to do. Okay, so Levi had three sons. Hershon, Kohath, and Merari. So Levi was the third son of Jacob. He himself had three sons. The Levites were charged to carry the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Come on. Okay. Wow. Deuteronomy 10. 8 and 9. I just want you to hear this. You can write it down. Deuteronomy 10, verses 8 and 9. At that time, the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant. And now Deuteronomy is recounting a lot of things that already happened. And so Moses is reminding them of things that they already knew. This chapter 10 is actually speaking back to Exodus 32. The golden calf when the Levites are ordained mm -hmm. yeah. to serve the Lord. Amen. It says, verse 8, At that time the Lord set apart the tribe of Levi to carry the Ark of the Covenant. Come on. Okay, we understand the Ark of the Covenant represents the Spirit of God, the presence of God Amen. that wants to abide in this Ark. Yeah. The Levites are called to carry this. Yeah. Okay, they are called to carry the Spirit, the very presence of God. They are charged to carry this. Yeah. yeah. It says, they're also called to stand before the Lord, yes. to minister to Him, and to bless in His name to this day. So the Levites are assigned with a, a heavenly task yeah. that yeah. somebody has to carry out. That God wants to abide with His people. See, God is a good God. Yeah. He doesn't want to slaughter people. He wants to abide with people. Yeah. He wants to dwell with the Israelites. Yeah. And he's making a way. And he's chosen the Levites because he's seen something in them. And they've shown something that I can use Amen. these people yeah. to attach myself to the rest of my children. Yeah. The children of Israel. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so Hebrews 8 verse 5 says that the law serves as a copy and shadow yeah. of heavenly things. Yeah. Okay. Now it's important that. That we, we don't get bogged down by like, okay, Older Testament. No, this is important because God set things first in foundation so that we could understand what was to come. Yeah, amen. And so uh, we, we received this teaching from the tabernacle, uh -huh. yeah. right? And, and all the sections of the tabernacle. Uh, the tabernacle had three major sections. The outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. That's right. Yeah. Right, the tabernacle represents God's presence dwelling in the midst of their camp Come on. of the camp of israel god wants to be with his people inside the holy place you find three items the table of showbread the menorah and the altar of incense the presence of god is dwelling in the camp so you have to think of the the man that is chosen and the sons of this man who are chosen to attach the people of israel Come on. Verse 9 in Deuteronomy 10 says, After they have been set apart for this task, to carry the Ark of the Covenant, to stand before the Lord, to minister to Him, and to bless in His name. See, they are to be a blessing to others Amen. in the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. The Lord is actually asking them to be a blessing. blessing. Yeah. And so in verse 9 it says, Therefore, Levi has no portion or inheritance yeah. with his brothers. And this means they have no earthly yes. land. Right. See, the, the Lord allotted land for all the tribes of Israel. Yeah. And each tribe got their specific land that they would be receiving as a tribe. But the Lord says, I'm calling the Levites yeah. to me. And their inheritance is the Lord. The Lord is his inheritance as the Lord your God has said to him. Yeah. And so the Levites don't have an earthly inheritance. 
they have a heavenly one. Yeah. Okay? They have they have a heavenly kind of mind. Think of Colossians uh, 3 and 1. Set your minds on things above. Uh -huh. yeah. We are called to a heavenly inheritance, yeah. which is in the Lord. You can think of Psalm 17. The Lord is my portion. Yeah. My, li my lines are fallen in pleasant places. Yeah. Amen. Uh, David Amen. is saying this in, yeah. in Psalm 16. Amen. Amen. Apart, beside from you, I have no good thing. Yeah. yeah. And so we, we're, we're working to gather this Levitical perspective. Yeah. One that is not set on things of this earth. One that is set on things above. Yes. Yeah. Come on. That Amen. is why we're, there's much to glean from the Levites. Um, and we're talking about this number three, right? The third day of creation represents new life. Yes. All right, so the Levites were charged to be the agents to attach, to bring peace, to clean, to purify, and then to attach the people of God to Him. Yeah. See, this is to be a shadow and type. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. the tabernacle is a shadow and type of what's heavenly. There's a, yep. there's a heavenly tabernacle. Uh -huh. exactly right. The Levites are a shadow and type, mm -hmm. a priesthood of a priesthood that was yet to come. come yeah. right? They were mediating in, 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 the, in the Older Testament. Yeah. They were, they were mediators, right? The priests, the sons of Aaron, were interceding for the people of Israel. This is to be a shadow and type of what is to come. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot begin to think of our great high priest, yeah. Jesus on. Christ. We're going to go to Hebrews 3. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let's turn to Hebrews 3. And as you go to Hebrews 3, I, I'm just going to remind you. Of what John 1 says. So you go to Hebrews 3. I'm just going to read out of John 1. Somebody say that's somebody's son. Somebody's son. Hallelujah. So in John chapter 1 we see that. John the Baptist has begun to. To. To set the way for one to come. He said, I'm not the light, but I'm I'm talking about the light. I'm a witness about the light. Uh -huh. And in verse 32, he says, I saw a spirit descend from heaven like a dove, like a dove. And it remained on him. Yeah. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Verse 34 says, And I have seen and have borne witness. That this is the Son of God. Amen. That's somebody's son. Amen. Now before there was Levites, there was Levi. Come on. Right? Uh -huh. Before there were Christians, there was Christ. Come on. You see the Levites represent a priesthood that was to attach the people of God to him. It's, it's, for, it's for us to begin understanding what Christ begins to begins and continues and will continue to do for us. Uh -huh. right? Our great high priest who was given... To reconcile the world Come to the on. Father. Amen. Yeah. Think of Levi. Amen. He was a son born to a wife with the hope to attach her to her husband. Yeah. 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 You can say God gave a son yeah. Yeah. that would bring his bride back to him. Yes. The son of God given to attach the people the way, the means that we could get back to God. Good. Are you all yeah. seeing this? Yeah. 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 The son of God. That's somebody's son. Yeah. Amen. The account of Matthew, when you read the account of Matthew and the baptism of Jesus, Matthew 16 and 7, or chapter 3, 16 and 17. Yeah. In that account, you you read that as the spirit descended upon Jesus, uh -huh. a voice came out of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, This is my son. son. Yeah. yeah. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Yeah. See, as the Spirit comes and, this, and, re, and remains on Jesus, there is a declaration that comes from heaven. This is my son, God says. Uh -huh. And the Spirit coming upon him to John the Baptist is a witness. Because yes. God told John, in, on him whom you see the Spirit come down and remain, it is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Come on. And John understands this is the Son of God. Right. He's the only one that can baptize with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's the one who is carrying, like the Levites, the presence of God. Amen. You see, the Spirit descended on him, and it remained on him. Think of the Levites charged to ca carry the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. You see how these are, these are shadow and types that yeah. we're supposed to be seeing from the Older Testament carrying to 
the New Testament, Amen. in the life of Jesus, and they're supposed to mean something to us. Yeah. When yeah. the dove comes down on him and it remains there. Hallelujah. He's the yeah. only one that can baptize with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And this Holy Spirit that comes upon him is the, the one who bears witness that this is the Son of God. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. And so you all went to Hebrews 3, right? Yeah. 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 Somebody's son. Come That's on. somebody's son. Hebrews 3, verse 1 says, Therefore, holy brothers, you who share in a heavenly calling. Who shares in a heavenly calling here? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Consider Jesus, the yeah. apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him. Just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, Amen. as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than the house itself. Amen. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Verse 5, Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. Yeah. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. Amen. Yeah. Christ is faithful over God's house as His Son. Yeah. You see how this has to do with sonship? Yeah. yeah. You see how the Lord shows His Son, the Son Levi, the Son of Jacob, to to attach His people to Him. Amen. A, a son, a son that that was to was to begin to serve. Now, now this this refers to Moses as a servant. We know Moses is is there. <laughs> he shows up at the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah, but there's only one Son, begotten Son of God. Who could actually intercede as a great high priest right. and give all of us yeah. access to the Father. Amen. He says, But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son, and we are his house. Come on. If indeed we hold fast to our confidence and our boasting and our hope. We uh -huh. are his house. Yes. Yeah. See the tabernacle of the old yeah. testament now is a living, walking tabernacle. Yes. In humans. Amen. Right? Yeah. We, we we know these things. What we are really getting at today is that there's a son who came to attach the world to the father Amen. there's a spirit who bears witness Come on. of this son yep. Romans 8 9 says that if, he, if the spirit is not in you you do not belong to Christ yeah. but if the spirit is in you you belong to Christ Amen. the spirit of God bears witness that we are children of God See, day three represents new life, sprouting, resurrection, revelation, witness. On, on day three, the, the fruit of the earth came out. The Lord was being intentional about that. On the third day, Jesus came up out of the earth Amen. to give us all life. On day three, which is why I, I said I love that we began this teaching on Resurrection Sunday, talking about the Levites, the third son of Jacob, because on the third day, Jesus came out of the earth to give to give the earth life Amen. and peace and reconciliation to the Father. Yeah. See, God was projecting these things from the very beginning, yeah. from the day, day three of creation, from from giving uh, Jacob the, his third son Levi to attach his people to him. Yeah. But let us not despise small beginnings, yeah. right? That's right. That's Before right. they were Christians, there was Christ. That's right. He had to go to the cross for us. Amen. He did so. He was victorious. Yeah. So that we could have his spirit. So that we could be called children and sons of God. Yeah. 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 Are you somebody's son? Come yeah. on. Whose sons are you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You're the sons of God. Amen. Yeah. Come on. The spirit of God bears witness that yeah. you are sons of God. Amen. See, Levi was somebody's son. Yeah. This is where this is where I was sharing with you. The Lord was working with me real time this morning. Because... Mm. You know, you, you you have things in your mind that the Lord wants you to have ingrained in your heart. And I was reminded this morning that God put me in this family and I was a spiritual orphan before arriving here. Uh, I was I was lost. I, I was I was a prodigal son. Anyone else here maybe would say yeah. at one point I was a prodigal son. I I, I I didn't quite realize what I had in the Lord. Yeah, see, because yeah. I, yeah. I grew up Christian and I grew up going to church and 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 this and that and I'm saved. Okay, I got baptized. Hmm. And you get in a sense of complacency. Yeah. Uh, and Satan really loves that yeah. because 
Um, yeah, yeah, he'll begin to deceive you to think you're okay. When your life is headed to destruction, there's a way that seems right, but it leads to destruction. See, that's where I was before arriving in this house, in this family. Amen. And the Lord was reminding me of that today. I gave you a father. I gave you a spiritual father that you never had before. Amen. And I and I showed up under that tree and Elder Chris came and gave me a hug. That's all he did. He didn't say a word. Amen. He just grabbed me and gave me a hug. Yeah, and you know that day I felt like the prodigal son coming back home. Wow. I really did. Because the two years before that I, I ate food of pigs. Yeah. And even that was not been even even that was been denied for me. Look, just like that son that we see in Luke 15, the prodigal son, yeah. who, having squandered, having asked for the Lord of his inheritance, and having taken it away, you guys know the story, yeah. and yeah. squandered it, then realized, what am I doing? I'm wasting my life. I've wasted everything. Let me go back and just be a servant. Let me go back and just be a servant in my father's house. Uh -huh. yeah. And he takes on this mentality, and the father sees him, and he doesn't see a servant, he sees a son. Amen. Yeah. And he puts a robe and a ring and shoes on his feet. See, that, that's what I can... Now, listen, I'm talking about myself now. I told you that the Lord was telling me, to, telling me these things. Amen. I brought you into a family. Do you realize that? Amen. Yeah. Do you realize I gave you a father? I gave you three spiritual fathers. You never had that before. I, I didn't know what it was to have a spiritual father. <laughs> Our, our parents do the, do the best. My parents did the best they knew they were to do. And I love them. And I honor them. I didn't have spiritual fathers. So I came here. And the Lord reminded me of these things this morning. You were an orphan and I brought you into a family. And I gave you, I gave you a father. I'm your father and I was reminded of that by the Holy Holy Chris gave me. Like just a father embracing a lost son. So, are you somebody's son? Come on. Yeah. Are you somebody's son? Because yeah. you have to be reminded of that sonship. Yeah. Because last week we were we were hearing that the Levites have no inheritance, no earthly yeah. inheritance. Yeah. So they're serving and they're doing and they're carrying things and they're doing tasks, menial tasks, daily tasks. But if you do those tasks as a servant, you're you're gonna get burned out. Yeah. That's what happened to me I, in my efforts to be a good Christian. I got burned out. Mm -hmm. And the Lord brought me here and he, he taught me sonship. Mm -hmm. You see that the son serves out of love. The son serves out of a, a gratitude that it's just happy to be back home. I'm back home. I have a home. Yes. Yes. I have a place to I have a place to lay my head tonight. I, I can sit at the table. Think of Mephibosheth when he's invited to David's table. Yeah. Yes. He was a lame man. He was not supposed to be there. And he says, come to my table. Yeah. Eat with me. Yeah. And so as we serve the Lord, as we continue to... Um, Fight for holiness and consecration and this Levitical perspective. We must do that from the perspective of we are sons of God. Yeah. And we love him. He loved us first. Yeah. So we love him. I'm gonna give you everything I have, Lord. Everything I am is yours. What can I give you? Amen. What more do you want from me? I'll I'll do it. It might be hard. But you're my father and you rescued me and you took me back in. Amen. See he he who love he who's been forgiven of much loves much. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, the Lord told the woman, as he was sitting in the Pharisee's house. Yeah. And the Pharisee's like, well, if you knew who she was, you, you would not let her touch you. Yeah. The Lord says, well, no. She's been forgiven of much. She, yeah. she loved much. Yeah. yeah. Have you been forgiven of much? Yeah. 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 Even if you were not one to, to squander the inheritance like me, can you say you've been forgiven of much? Yeah. Because we all have. Yeah. It's not about who left the house or because there's another son who stayed in the house. Yeah. Thinking of the, the prodigal parable there's two sons right yeah one who left one who stayed yeah and the one who stayed still had things in the heart that needed to be uprooted from his heart That's right. why did you kill the calf for this i've been here with you this whole time i've been serving you this whole time and you've never given me a calf to enjoy with my friends yeah so whether we've gone and we left us straight and the lord brought us back or we've always stayed here mm -hmm. but where are our hearts in regards to how we're serving the father right. are we doing it out of a place of sonship yeah. out of a place of we're just happy to be in a family. We're happy to have a father. We're Amen. happy to we're happy to uh, belong. Amen. By the seventh cleaning from the Levites is they belong to the Lord. Amen. Is yeah. that enough to you yeah, yeah. to say that you belong to God? Yeah. Mm. That His Spirit is abiding in you. Yeah. 
Saints, I want us to get this as we close out tonight. Today. That's somebody's son. When that said of Levi, then you would word it like this. Levi is a son of Israel. Okay? Jacob, before his name is changed to Israel. The man who God knew would wrestle until daybreak and receive that blessing. That's his son, Levi. Yeah. The man who would fight for what is right and have a zeal for God's house that would set him up to be used by the Lord in the most sacrificial of ways. And life always, their lives always were necessary to their brothers around them. What Oscar and I endeavored to do when we set out to write down just a few notes was to make sure that this body understands the great need for diligence in the small things. Yeah. yeah. Because we, we consider the way things grow and develop and take on maturity and then all of a sudden we can forget the simplicity of the foundation stone. Yeah. The, simplic the simplicity of that's someone's daughter, that's someone's son. Yeah. Right. The simplicity of the beginnings and the word in Zechariah says the Lord delights in the beginning of a thing. He likes it. He likes the beginning of a thing. He likes when that cornerstone is laid. Yeah. You know what we're warring against in our culture? In our culture, we're warring against this deceptive trap of hell that would make us think we can have the glorious, we can, we can have the maturity, we can, we can have the calling of God, we can raise a family of God and forsake the little things along the way that will actually get us there. You don't build a house unless you lay a cornerstone. Yeah. Yeah. Zechariah declares that the Lord rejoices to see a thing uh -huh. begin. Amen. He rejoices to see something begin. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to be coming to a close here in just a minute. But in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham, Abram walks his only son up to the top of a mountain. No, that's not Genesis 12. Genesis 12, he's called out. Yeah. A burr of the Chaldees. When he's called out, by the time you get to the sacrifice of his son on Mount Moriah, doesn't that event take on a little bit more uh, emphasis when you realize that the Lord's asking that of a father to a son? That's somebody's son. It wasn't a random stranger who was going to sacrifice Isaac. God required Abram to be willing to sacrifice Isaac. Right. Right. Now, I know we've been preaching a lot Please don't disconnect now. This is the most important part of the message. Yeah, come on. As Oscar just taught, all of these things are done because they are a picture of something either in the heavenlies or something that's to come. Yeah. How does it affect you that the God of the universe sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to the cross in your place? Mm. That's somebody's son. And the implications are huge. And you may be in here and you may be born again and you know it. But you may be in here and you may not know. Of the saving power of the blood of Jesus. Of the gospel message that really finds its strength in the fact that Jesus is God's son. Right. Yeah. We want to accomplish something mighty for the Lord. We want to do something great. And the Lord's taking us back to the simplicity today. Do you understand what the Son of God accomplished on your behalf? 
Pair that with all the information that you've been given. The Levites were assigned to carry the presence of God. What do you think your life is about? Yeah. Right. Well, you are assigned to carry God's yes. presence. Yes. That's an assignment. If you're not born of the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit of God, you can't be a son of God. But if you are born of the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit of God, you're a son of God. And because He doesn't dwell in temples made by hands, but in human hearts, we carry the presence of God. But how well are we doing at that? Some of us are struggling. And we may be struggling because we are forgetting that was someone's son who died for our sins. Yeah. That was God's son. Yeah. How do you feel about your son and daughters in this room? Fathers and mothers? How do you feel about your sons and daughters? Would it be easy for you to sacrifice one of them for the sake of the world? No. It would not be. Your love for them is tremendous. It's, it's, it's beyond what words could describe. Yeah. And yet how much more does the God of the universe love? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this isn't just, oh, we get the chance to be born again. He gave up His Son. Yeah, yeah. Has the Gospel message become dull to us? Because the Levitical priesthood was made up of men who understood that a life of sacrifice was not a burden to them, yeah. but a very blessing to them. Amen. Yeah. We're sons and daughters of God, and sacrifice is still a little bit of a burden to us. How could that be true? Because I'm detached from this truth. That's somebody's son. Yeah. The Levitical priesthood, they walk in this manner of intense fierceness because they understood that they weren't without. They were giving the favor and blessing of God. How are we doing with that as the people of God who are supposed to be carrying the presence of God? Come on, church. Are we carrying the presence of God rightly? Are we a royal priesthood? I'm going to have Oscar read 1 Peter 2.9. And then we're going to go to the book of Revelation. And we're going to close this out. And our hope is that you'll be able to connect the dots with what we were trying to convey here today. And understand that there must be a zeal that surfaces within us yeah. because of the revelation that God gave up His only begotten Son. Amen. That was somebody's Son. It wasn't just a man. It was Jesus. Yep. He was perfect. Yep. Per without blemish. None. Never committed a single wrong in all of the planet, in all of his life. And he spilled innocent blood so that the burdens of sin and guilt and shame wouldn't have to be attached to me forever. Yeah. And that same son went into a tomb and that same son resurrected from that tomb to make sure that I would know that death has zero power over me. Yeah. But I don't carry his presence like that. Yeah. I carry it oftentimes like I'm still grasping for the revelation. Yeah. That was somebody's son. And what it leads me to is this very broken place where I forget that I am His Son. Mm. If you forget that you are His Son, or you are His daughter, then your faith begins to dwindle. If you're not convinced you're His son or daughter in this room, today is the day. Now is the yeah. accepted time, says yeah. the Lord. Today's the day of salvation. Yeah. Jesus wants this revelation of His Lordship to overwhelm your life. Yeah. And you stand up under this newfound confidence of sonship. Yeah. Why do you get to be a son? 
Because Jesus is somebody's son. Amen. The son of God. Amen. Let's go to 1 Peter 2 9, real quick. That's somebody's son. Before there were Levites, there was Levi. Before there was us Christians, there was Christ. A fruit or a tree produces after its own kind. And if you're born of the Spirit of God, then you, you've been born after a kind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You've been born after the seed that is imperishable. 1 Peter 2 9 says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, Amen. a holy nation, Amen. a people for his own possession. Come on. He's speaking this to the nation of Israel. Amen. And we're grafted into that. Come on. Come on. We have been adopted. Romans 8 16. The Spirit bears witness. We've received the spirit of adoption that bears witness that we are children of God. Therefore, this is for us. A royal priesthood. We are called Come to be on. a royal priesthood. Come on. But the Levites represented a priesthood. Yeah. Not a royal priesthood. Yeah. Okay? I tend to read over this verse and read right over the word royal because I'm familiar with the verse. Come on. But royal stands for kingly. Yeah, kingly. Come on. Something yeah. that's after, after a king. Yeah. Yeah. Kingship, royal. Yes. See, we are called to be a royal priesthood. Amen. The Levites were the priesthood that the Lord established to begin to show what was to come. Yeah. We are priests. We are called to be a priesthood after the order of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Just like the sons of Aaron were called to be a priest after Aaron. Come on. Amen. Now that means that if we're called to be a royal priesthood, a kingly priesthood, we are to follow the pattern set by the king. Yeah. Amen. In, in this chapter, 1 Peter 2, verse 5 says, You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. Come on. To be a holy priesthood. Yes. To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Amen. We are called to offer sacrifices acceptable to Him. Yeah. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And this is this is the life that we are called to and have taken to if we are if we are a royal priesthood Amen. after the order of Jesus Christ Amen. to walk in the way that he walked to carry out greater works than he than he Amen. did because he went to the oh, Father. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. This is this is the call of our lives. Amen. 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 And we are to rejoice and to do it out of a place of sonship and love uh -huh. Amen. for what he did for us. Yes. He we live because he lived. Amen. Because he, yeah. because he rose up, we, we live. Amen. 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 Let's go to Revelation 2. And while you do, let's uh, stand up to our feet. And uh, we'll have the worship team come up.